Good morning. This morning we are starting a new unit. Our unit is called Lights, Camera, Action. We have a new memory verse, so let's go ahead and get started. I am sure that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on that day when Christ Jesus comes back again. Philippians 1, 6. This morning, we are only going to learn the first five words. I am sure that God. So let's go ahead and we'll say that. But instead of just saying that I am sure that God, we are going to take turns with each word, putting the emphasis on that word. So first time around, we'll emphasize I. Second time, am sure. Got it? Here we go. I am sure that God. Now it's this one. I am sure that God. 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 Good job. Let's say it again. I am sure that God. We have confidence that God is going to do what he says he'll do and that he is going to do a good work in us. Listen to this song, sing along. It reminds us that God has a plan just for us. God has a plan for my life. God has a plan for my life. I just can't wait to see what's in store for me. are continuing with Abraham. We know that God made a promise to Abraham that if he left Haran and went to the land that God showed him, God would give him the land and he would make him a mighty nation. Now last week we found out that very old man Abraham and very old lady Sarah had a baby and it was such a funny thing to have a baby when the dad was a hundred years old and the mom was 90 years old that they named the baby Isaac because it means laughter. It was just too funny to have a baby when you are that old. So today we're going to talk more about Isaac. Just like you, Isaac did not stay a little baby. Isaac grew up. And we're going to go ahead and jump even farther ahead to when Isaac was a grown up man. And it was time for Isaac to get married. Now today, if somebody wanted to get married, they would go find someone, fall in love, and get married. But back then, that is not how it happened. In fact, it wasn't Isaac's decision or choice at all. It was Abraham's decision on who Isaac would marry. It was called an arranged marriage, and the parents were the ones who picked who the children we're going to marry. And so Abraham needed to find a wife for Isaac. Now remember Abraham had lived over in Haran and had all of his relatives, all of his country was there. And he had left and moved to Canaan, which is where God told him to move and where the promise would be fulfilled. But when it got time for Isaac to get married, Abraham called his servant. He said, I don't want Isaac to have a wife from around here. Isaac needs to marry one of the girls from back home where I was raised. And so he told the servant, servant, I want you to go back to Haran. I want you to find a wife for Isaac and I want you to bring her back so Isaac can marry her. Well, the servant 
was very good to rent. And he said, of course, Abraham. Uh, shall I take Isaac with me? Oh, no, 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 no. Abraham did not want Isaac to go. Isaac has to stay here. Isaac cannot leave. He has to stay here. Well, that caused the servant a little bit of alarm. Well, Abraham, what if, what if the girl doesn't want to come? And Abraham said, don't you worry about it because God is going to go before you. He's going to find just the right girl and God will make sure she comes back with you to marry Isaac. God made me a promise. God's going to make me a mighty nation and it's the promise is through Isaac. Don't you worry. God has this under control. Well, the servant was still a little worried, but he did exactly what Abraham asked him to do. And he got up and he started that long journey. Remember how long it took Abraham and Sarah and Lot and all the servants and all the animals to come from Haran over to Canaan. Well, this servant had to go all the way back to find a wife for Isaac. So he went. Now Abraham was a rich man, so he had sent the servant with 10 camels. Guys, you know what a camel is? It's that great big animal, like bigger than a horse, it has a big hump on it. They were how people would get across those dry stretches of land. So Abraham sent the 10 camels with the servant, sent presents, very nice, expensive presents of gold and different jewelry to the future bride of Isaac. The servant goes and goes and goes until finally he gets to Haran. Now once he got there, he thought, huh, now what am I supposed to do? I don't know anyone in this town. I'm not from around here. How am I supposed to go about finding the right young lady to be the bride for Isaac? I've got it. I will pray and ask God to send me just the right girl. Dear God, Abraham sent me here to get a wife for Isaac. Please send me a wife for Isaac. Huh. How am I going to know which one is the right girl? Hmm. Oh, I've got it. And God, please help the right girl to offer to water my camels. Amen. Abraham's servant finished praying, and along comes a young lady. And so he hurries over to her and says, Excuse me, would you please give me a drink of water? Now, if you needed a drink of water and you were inside your house, where would you go to get a drink of water? We would just go to the sink and get a drink of water, I'd pour some water in a cup, get a nice drink. What if you were outside? How would you get a drink of water if you were outside and couldn't get inside? Maybe on a hot summer day, you would get a drink of water out of the hose. That could work. It would be nice and cold if you let the water run for a little while. Perfect, except that back then, they did not have sinks and they did not have a hose. Back then, to get a drink of water was actually pretty complicated. You had to get water out of a well. Now a well, I'm not talking about the great big animal that lives in the ocean. I'm talking about a deep, deep hole in the ground that water comes up in and you lower a bucket down into the well and you pull the bucket back up and it has a nice drink of water in it. Well, you can't dig a hole this deep and get water. And if you were in your backyard and you dug a hole this deep, you still would not get water. You would still just get dirt. A well goes way, 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 way down into the ground and then the water comes. Well, in order back then to get the water from way down at the bottom of the well, they used a long rope and they tied a bucket onto the rope. And you had to lower 
the bucket down into the big deep hole. Let it swish around and then pull the bucket back up and it would have water in it. And that's how you could get a drink of water. Now, Abraham's servant asked for a drink for himself. So if I'm really, really thirsty, I might be able to drink maybe even a whole glass of water or maybe even a glass and a half of water. But what was Abraham's servant's prayer? It was that the right girl, the one who was going to be a bride for Isaac, was going to water the camels too. Now, a camel's a lot bigger than we are, so they could probably drink a lot more. But camels are special animals, and when they're really super thirsty, they can drink between 20 and 30 gallons of water. So if you guys have had a big milk jug at your house, like the big ones, that's one gallon. A camel can drink between 20 and 30 of those all at the same time, all at one time. They just keep drinking and drinking and drinking until they've had 20 to 30 gallons of water. Well, that is a whole lot of water, especially since Abraham's servant had 10 camels. That's 200 to 300 gallons. That's a whole lot, even if you just were filling it up at the sink, which this was not. This was lowering the bucket down, pulling the bucket back up. So Abraham's servant said, would you please get me a drink of water? That's not asking too much. But this young lady, she said, oh, I'd be happy to. I'll even water your camels for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Abraham's servant was so excited. Thank you, God, for sending the right girl to be a wife for Isaac. Abraham's servant had asked God to have the right young lady who was to be the wife of Isaac offer to water the camels, even though it was going to be such a big, big job. This girl offered exactly that. The young lady's name was Rebecca, and the servant said, Rebecca, my master Abraham, who I'm the servant of, has sent me to find a wife for his son Isaac. Rebecca, would you be Isaac's wife? And he gave her presents of gold that Abraham had sent. They went back to Rebekah's house and he talked to her dad and her brother and he gave them all the presents. And he said, can Rebekah go and be Isaac's wife? Abraham would be so happy. They said yes. There was a wife for Isaac. Rebecca would go and marry Isaac. She came back with the camels and they started the long journey back. They finally arrived back in Canaan and the servant said, Abraham, Isaac, look, God answered my prayer. He sent just the right girl. Rebecca has come to be the wife for Isaac. Isaac and Rebekah got married, and they were so thankful that God had a plan. Let's pray. God, thank you for listening to Abraham's servant's prayer, and thank you for sending just the right girl to be Isaac's wife. Amen. Now, in your packet this week, you have a roll of toilet paper. Now, that is not included in your packet because of coronavirus or we need toilet paper. It is so that you can dress up like a bride. The toilet paper will actually be what you clothe yourself in. Now, you're going to need to work with somebody else because it's very difficult to make a dress for yourself out of toilet paper. You are welcome to be the one designing the dress on somebody else in your house, or you're welcome to let them use the toilet paper to dress you like the bride. We have actually done this in class before, so you do know what you're doing. Have
Have a good time and I'll see you on Wednesday.